I'm going to show you how to take a rich and creamy good lotion and turn that into a bar. It's going to be great, it's going to renew your faith in lotion bars and hopefully it's going to make for some great gifts this season. So let's make lotion bars. For our first lotion bar recipe, oh yes, this is going to be one of three. We're starting off by making a classic lotion bar. Well, lotion bar in quotations. Considering you'll only need three ingredients, it's completely all natural and it's perfect for beginners. In a large heatproof container, measure out 50 grams of cocoa butter. Yes, you can use other butters, but I specifically chose to use cocoa butter because it's widely available, easy to recognize, and you can tell if it's high quality or not. If it doesn't smell like chocolate, chuck it in the bin. But the main reason is for its firm and smooth texture. The harder the butter you use, the less wax you'll need to make a solid bar. And that's how you get that really melty, buttery smooth lotion bar that doesn't feel like rubbing chalk on your skin. Next up, we have 16 grams of beeswax. Again, you can use any wax here and candelilla is a great vegan alternative. But beeswax works well here because it's a soft wax that gives our body butter bars a little flexibility so that they're solid but not rock hard. And lastly, to bring everything together, we'll need 33 grams of oil. Now I'm actually using extra virgin olive oil because it's a great moisturizer and you're likely to already have it at home. But insert your favorite oil here, it really doesn't matter. The trick to making the perfect body butter bars is all about finding the right balance between solids and liquids. Natural ingredients are more temperamental, so low and slow is the game when it comes to heating. I'd recommend either using a double boiler or bain-marie like you see here to avoid overheating. Allow the butter and wax to melt, stirring occasionally to help it along. After about 20 minutes, you should have a completely liquid mixture. Next up, molds. I'd encourage you to use silicone molds that are really flexible, and that way you won't have a hard time taking out your body butter bars. Now because there's no preservative, these bars will work best in small, single-use molds. Out of this 100 gram mixture, I was able to get 4.25 bars. Refrigerate overnight, although I did leave these in for about 24 hours. And when you're done, they should pop out of the molds easily. Now let's see if these free ingredient bars are up to scratch. You know what? These are like the final form of every online DIY skincare recipe that promises you the perfect product with just free ingredients. Are they perfect? No. But they are pretty good. You see the way it just glides across your skin with no resistance and it leaves that trail of moisture? That is exactly what you want in a lotion bar. You know, I just can't get mad at something like this. It's so easy to make, it's free ingredients, completely all natural. Ugh, it smells amazing thanks to the cocoa butter that we used, but it does have some obvious flaws. The first and most obvious is that these aren't lotion bars. I honestly don't know why they keep being called that, but they have no hydrating capabilities and they can't come in contact with water. And I hate to admit it, but they are on the greasier side. What I would describe these as being are like solid body butters. So if you love the rich decadence of a good body butter, these little body butter bars will be your new obsession. And because they're so easy to make and completely natural, they'll make for the perfect gift if you're a beginner or just starting to get into making your own skincare. But for those of you who want something a little more refined and a little less greasy, let's make real lotion bars. Next up, we have the ultra creamy, often imitated but never quite replicated true lotion bar. In another heatproof bowl, start by adding 52.5 grams of shea butter. That's right, we're moving on to cocoa butter's creamier cousin. Unrefined shea butter has an off-white malleable texture that's soft enough to squeeze just with your fingertips. It will give our lotion bar a soft, rich texture that melts on the skin. To that, you can optionally add a little bit of cocoa butter. And here's where things start to get really interesting because we're using 22.5 grams of an emulsifying wax. Emulsifying waxes have hydrophobic and hydrophilic qualities that bind oils and water together. So when the bar is used on wet skin, it forms a creamy emulsion that helps extra moisture absorb into your skin. This is not the same as beeswax and no, you can't substitute it with bees, soy or any other type of wax. After adding the non-negotiable emulsifying wax, you'll need 12 grams of a regular wax. I'm using candelilla wax, which will give our lotion bars a firmer, smooth set, but you can substitute this one with any regular wax. 
And then we'll need... Oh, <laughs> um, uh, this is kind of embarrassing. I actually forgot the next ingredient. Fortunately, FutureMe at WholeAlease.com has already written out the whole recipe, including measurements, tips on ingredients, and even links to where I buy them. Wow! <laughs> but anyway, do click the free recipe link in the description box below for more information. Now that we're all up to date on ingredients, we'll need 22.5 grams of almond oil, followed by 18 grams of fractionated coconut oil. This gives just the right balance of moisturizing but light emollients, but you can use your favorite vegetable oils instead. Like before, melt your ingredients over a low, gentle heat, stirring occasionally. Seeing as it will take a while, you can use this time to measure out 7.5 grams of arrowroot powder. This is a fine, pillowy white powder that would absorb excess oil and cut down on that greasy texture that you can get with lotion bars. Keep whisking to make sure that the powder is fully dissolved and no lumps remain. Cornstarch, yes the very same that thickens sauces, will also work so use whichever you have available. Turn off the heat and allow the molten mixture to cool but make sure that it is still liquid. Add in your preservative. I'm using Optifen, but it might be called something different depending on where you are. Again, check the recipe link in the description below for more information on the exact INCI of this preservative. Once the preservative is mixed in, immediately transfer to your molds. Don't dilly or dally here, as the mixture will start to set on the sides of the container, so be careful. These lotion bars can be used multiple times, so you're not limited to bite-sized molds. Again, refrigerate for at least 12 hours and just like that, you'll have made real lotion bars. Now let's see if they were worth those extra steps. Now this is a lotion bar. Ooh, just the skin feel alone is a huge step up from the previous recipe. Now bars are always going to be richer and thicker than traditional lotions, but the emulsifying wax and preservative allows you to use this in water. And that really speeds up the absorption time as well as cutting down on the oiliness. But a word of warning, do make sure that these are completely dry before you store them. Don't be one of those people who just leaves your lotion bar on the side of a sink in a pool of water. You know who you are. As good as these lotion bars are, I still think we can do more with the bar form. So let's take this even further. Now after two recipes, you're probably thinking, how much better can lotion bars get? A lot. A lot better. For these hair and skin conditioner bars, that's right, we're making conditioner, we're retiring the shea and cocoa butter. This is all about the delectable mango butter. It has the softest texture of all three butters. It's non-greasy and crumbles under the slightest pressure. We'll also need 70 grams of BTMS. BTMS is a conditioning emulsifying wax that helps with slip and gives these bars that silky feeling on the hair. I'm using BTMS 50, but you can also use BTMS 25. Next up, we'll need 36 grams of a fatty alcohol that will help stabilize the bars and thicken it. This combined with six grams of steric acid, these white powdery flakes you see here, replaces the wax that we used in the previous recipes, as we don't want anything that will cause buildup or is hard to remove from our hair. Now let's get on to the real star of these conditioning bars, avocado oil. But this isn't just any avocado oil, I'm using ultra-rich, unrefined, organic avocado oil. Look at the colour on this oil. You can almost see the nutrients. Like before, place this on a low heat until melted. Unlike with basic lotion bars, this conditioner bar provides moisture to your hair without weighing it down or leaving it greasy. The choice of butter, oil, BTMS, cetyl alcohol and steric acid are key to getting the right texture. So don't skip them. Now there are a couple secret ingredients to take these conditioner bars to the ultimate level. Cationic guar gum is a natural thickener, similar to xanthan gum, but it's anti-static and perfect for reducing frizz and defining coils. Pamphenol powder is vitamin B5 that boosts your hair's moisture levels. I normally use this in liquid form, in case you're a little bit confused, but in bars the powder works best. In a separate bowl, combine the guar gum and pamphenol with 14 grams of vegetable glycerin. It might take a minute, but eventually you'll get a smooth paste that you can pour into your still liquid but off the heat conditioner base. Whisk to ensure that all the powders are fully incorporated. When the conditioner base has cooled a little, it can be warm but definitely not hot. We'll add in our preservative and antioxidant. 
Here I'm using Optifin again and vitamin E oil. This should protect the bars from molding or turning rancid for a minimum of three months. But again, check holdalise.com for more information. A totally optional and yet highly recommended step is to add some essential oils for fragrance. These can also double up as herbal treatments, such as using lavender and tea tree oil, which can help with dandruff and hair retention. Now, if you want multiple use bars, use a larger mold to set your conditioner. I got about two and a half bars out of this recipe. Refrigerate overnight and voila, you have just made the ultimate conditioner bar. Congratulations. You know the funny thing? I have been to places that have shampoo and no conditioner. You know who you are. And yet, I can't think of a single scenario where I would wash my hair without conditioner. So this little conditioning bar is so convenient. Pop one in your gym bag or travel bag, or just wherever there's some doubt that your destination will have the right amenities. And the best part is, you can actually use this as a regular lotion bar. It is truly an all-in-one hair and skincare lotion bar. I don't, I don't know if you guys can tell, but I'm actually really impressed with this one. It's just such a great conditioner in its own right. You've got that buttery smooth and silky BTMS that will condition your hair, but then we also have the natural oils and butters which helps with moisture. And then finally, to top all of that off, we have the vitamin B5 and guar gum, and that really helps with anti-frizz as well as hydration. I've shown you how to make body butter bars, real lotion bars, as well as conditioner bars from beginner all the way to pro, all within one video. That is just way too much goodness for one tutorial.